Hello everybody. Today we'll be talking about the surgical anatomy of the larynx. The larynx is a complex hollow structure located in the anterior midline region of the neck. It is anterior to the esophagus and at the level of the third to the sixth cervical vertebrae in its normal position. It consists of a cartilaginous skeleton connected by membranes, ligaments and associated muscles that suspended from surrounding structures. It sits just above the trachea and is continuous with the oropharynx. The function of the larynx. The larynx conducts air into the lower respiratory tract and closes off the airway, especially during swallowing to prevent aspiration of food. It's commonly referred to as the voice box or the organ of phonation as it houses the structure responsible for sound production. It's quite mobile in the neck and can also be seen and felt moving upwards and forward during swallowing, closing off the trachea and opening the esophagus. The anatomical structure of the larynx. Anatomically, the internal cavity of the larynx can be divided into three sections, the supraglottis, glottis and subglottis. The supraglottis from the anterior surface of the epiglottis to the vestibular folds, they are called false vocal cords. Glottis contains vocal cords and one centimeter below them, the opening between the vocal cords is known as rima glottidis, the size of which is altered by the muscles of phonation. Subglottis from inferior border of the glottis to the inferior border of the cricoid cartilage. The interior surface of the larynx is lined by pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. An important exception to this is the true vocal cords, which are lined by a stratified squamous epithelium. Cartilages of the larynx. There are nine cartilages located within the larynx. There are six paired which are three paired cartilages and three unpaired cartilages they form the laryngeal skeleton which provides rigidity and stability unpaired cartilages the three unpaired cartilages are the epiglottis thyroid and cricoid cartilages thyroid cartilage it's a large prominent structure which is easily visible in adult males it's composed of two sheets or laminae which join anteriorly to form the laryngeal prominence also known as the adam's apple the posterior border of each sheet projects superiorly and inferiorly to form the superior and inferior horns, also known as coronal. The superior horns are connected to the hyoid bone through the lateral thyrohyoid ligament, while the inferior horns articulate with the cricoid cartilage. Cricoid cartilage. The cricoid cartilage is a complete ring of hyaline cartilage, consisting of a broad sheet posteriorly and a much narrow arch anteriorly said to resemble a signet ring in shape. The cartilage completely encircles the airway, marking the inferior border of the larynx at the level of C6. It articulates with the paired arytenoid cartilages posteriorly, as well as providing an attachment to the inferior horns of the thyroid cartilage. The cricoid is the only complete circle of cartilage in the larynx or trachea. This is of clinical relevance during emergency intubation as pressure can be applied to the cricoid to occlude the esophagus and thus prevent regurgitation of gastric contents, known as cricoid pressure or selex maneuver. Epiglottis. The epiglottis is a leaf-shaped plate of elastic cartilage which marks the entrance to the larynx. Its torque is attached to the back of the anterior aspect of the thyroid cartilage. During swallowing, the epiglottis flattens and moves posteriorly to close off the larynx and prevent aspiration. Paired cartilages. There are three paired cartilages, the arytenoid, corniculate and cuneiform. They are situated bilaterally in the larynx. Arytenoid cartilages. The arytenoid cartilages are pyramidal shaped structures that sit on the cricoid cartilage. They consist of an apex base and three sides and two processes and provide an attachment point for various key structures in the larynx, apex, base, vocal process and the muscular processes. Corniculate cartilages. The corniculate cartilages are minor cartilaginous structures. They articulate with the apices of the arytenoid cartilages. Cuneiform cartilages. The cuneiform cartilages are located within the area epiglottic folds. They have no direct attachment but act to strengthen the folds. As you can see in the picture here, the different cartilages of the larynx. 
ligaments and membranes. The laryngeal membranes and ligaments support the cartilaginous skeleton of the larynx. The extrinsic ligaments act to attach the components of the larynx to external structures like the hyoid and the cricoid cartilage. The intrinsic ligaments are responsible for holding the cartilages of the larynx together as one functional unit internally. The external ligaments are the median thyrohyoid ligament, lateral thyrohyoid ligament, hyoepiglottic ligament, cricotracheal ligament, median cricothyroid ligament and it also contains a thyrohyoid membrane. The intrinsic ligaments are ligament A is the cricothyroid ligament which originates from the cricoid cartilage and extends superiorly where it terminates with an, with an unattached upper margin which forms the vocal ligament. It is additionally attached anteriorly to the thyroid cartilage and posteriorly to the arytenoid cartilage. It also contains the quadrangular membrane, which spans between the anterolateral arytenoid cartilage and the lateral aspect of the epiglottis. It has a free upper margin and lower margin. The, the lower margin is thickened to become the vestibular ligament. <coughs> this picture depicts the ligaments of the larynx. The laryngeal folds. There are two important soft tissue folds located within the larynx, the vestibular folds and the vocal folds. They play a crucial part in the protection of the airway, breathing and phonation. Vocal cords. The vocal cords or the true vocal cords are the more important of the two sets. Under the control of the muscles of phonation, they are abducted, adducted, relaxed and tends to control the pitch of the sound created. Histologically, they are structured as follows, superficial to deep. They have non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, ring case space, vocal ligament, vocalis muscle. Vestibular folds. The vestibular folds or false vocal cords lie superiorly to the true vocal cords. They consist of the vestibular ligament, free lower edge of the quadrangular membrane, covered by mucous membrane and are pink in color. They have mixed, uh, they're fixed folds which act to provide protection to the larynx. Laryngeal muscles. The muscles of the larynx can be divided into two groups, the external muscles and the internal muscles. The external muscles act to ele elevate or depress the larynx during swallowing. In contrast, the internal muscles act to move the individual components of the larynx, playing a vital role in breathing and phonation. Extrinsic muscles. The extrinsic muscles act to move the larynx superiorly and inferiorly. They are comprised of the suprahyoid and infrahyoid groups and the stylopharyngeus, a muscle of the pharynx. The supra and infrahyoid muscle groups attach to the hyoid bone. This in turn is bound to the larynx by strong ligaments, allowing the whole of the larynx to be moved as one unit. As a general rule, the suprahyoid muscles and the stylopharyngeus ele elevate the larynx, whilst the infrahyoid muscles depress the larynx. As you can see in the slide, on the picture on top, we have the anterior view of the in infrahyoid muscles of the neck and in the picture below, we have the anterior view of the neck with the suprahyoid muscles which are highlighted. Next, we'll talk about the intrinsic muscles. The intrinsic laryngeal muscles act on the individual components of the larynx. They control the shape of the rima glottidis, opening between the vocal folds and the arytenoid cartilages and the length of the tension of the vocal cords, vocal folds, sorry. All the intrinsic muscles of the larynx except the cricothyroid are innervated by the inferior laryngeal nerve. The terminal branch of the recurrent laryngeal nerve itself, a branch of the vagus nerve, the cricothyroid is innervated of by the external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve, again derived from the vagus nerve. Cricothyroid. The cricothyroid muscle stretches and tenses the vocal ligaments and so is important for the creation of forceful speech. It also has a role in altering the tone of voice along with the tyroarytenoid muscle, hence its colloquial name singer's muscle. Attachments originates from the anterolateral aspect of the coracoid cartilage and attaches to the inferior margin and inferior horn of the thyroid cartilage. Its actions including stretches and tensing of the vocal ligament. It's innervated by the external laryngeal nerve.
which is a branch of the superior laryngeal nerve. Next, we have the thyroarytenoid. The thyroarytenoid muscle acts to relax the vocal ligament, allowing for a softer voice. Attachments, it originates from the inferoposterior aspect of the angle of the thyroid cartilage and attaches to the anterolateral part of the arytenoid cartilage. It relaxes the vocal ligament and it is innervated by the inferior laryngeal nerve, which is a branch of the recurrent laryngeal nerve. And then we have the posterior cricoid arytenoid. The posterior cricoid arytenoid muscles are the sole abductors of the vocal folds and thus the only muscle capable of widening the rima glottidis. It originates from the posterior surface of the cricoid cartilage and attaches to the muscular process of the arytenoid cartilage. It abducts vocal folds and is innervated by the inferior laryngeal nerve, which is a branch of the recurrent laryngeal. Next, we have the lateral cricoarytenoid. The lateral cricoarytenoid muscles are the major abduct abductors of the vocal folds. This narrows the rima glottidis, modulating the tone and volume of speech. It originates from the arch of the rico cricoid cartilage and attaches to the muscular process of the arytenoid cartilage. It abducts the vocal folds and it's innervated by the inferior laryngeal nerve, which is a branch of the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Then we have the transverse and oblique arytenoids. The transverse and oblique arytenoid muscles adduct the arytenoid cartilages, closing the posterior portion of rima glottidis. This narrows the laryngeal inlet. It spans from one arytenoid cartilage to the opposite arytenoid. It adducts the arytenoid cartilages, and it is innervated by the inferior laryngeal nerve, which is a branch of recurrent laryngeal nerve. Next, we talk about the blood supply and lymphatic drainage. The arterial, sorry, back. the arterial supply of the larynx is by the superior and inferior laryngeal arteries, which are branches of the thyroid arteries. The larynx is drained by corresponding veins, namely the superior and inferior laryngeal veins. The lymphatic vessels above the vocal folds drain into the superior deep cervical nodes, whereas those below the vocal folds drain first to nodes around the tracheal, pretracheal and paratracheal nodes and subsequently into the inferior deep cervical lymph nodes. Innervation. The right and left superior and inferior laryngeal nerves, which are branches of the vagus nerve, the tenth cranial nerve, provide motor and sensory innervation of the larynx. Each superior laryngeal nerve divides into the internal and external laryngeal nerves. The internal laryngeal nerve accompanies the superior laryngeal artery to the thy thyroid membrane and provides a sensory and automatic innervation of the laryngeal cavity to the level of the vocal cords. The smaller external laryngeal nerve provides motor innervation to the cricothyroid muscle. The recurrent laryngeal nerves, which are ascending branches of the vagus nerve, continue towards the larynx as the right and left inferior laryngeal nerves. They provide motor innervation to all the intrinsic muscles of the larynx except the cricothyroid muscles and sensory innervation to the laryngeal cavity below the vocal cords. Clinical relevance of the larynx. In setting of an acute life-threatening airway obstruction, physicians may perform a cricothyrotomy by inserting a needle through the cricothyroid ligament to establish an airway. A basic understanding of the anatomy of the larynx is required to perform this procedure. Under sterile conditions, physicians palpate the laryngeal prominence of the thyroid cartilage, also known as the Adam's apple, and slide their fingers downward till they feel the cricoid cartilage, which is the first firm bulge felt. The gap felt between the thyroid and cricoid cartilages the cricothyroid space is covered by the cricothyroid ligament. Next, we have the vocal cord paralysis. The vocal cords are responsible for the production of speech. Their movement is controlled by the intrinsic muscles of the larynx, the majority of which are innervated by the recurrent laryngeal nerve. An exception is the cricothyroid muscle innervated by the external laryngeal nerve. Due to its long course, the recurrent laryngeal nerve is susceptible to damage. The causes of the RLN palsy include apical lung tumor, thyroid cancer, aortic aneurysm, cervical lymphadenopathy, iatrogenic, particularly during thyroid surgery due to the close relationship with the inferior thyroid artery. And then in, in, in unilateral, uh, sorry, in unilateral RNN, RLN palsy, one vocal cord is paralyzed. The other cord tends to compensate and speech is not affected to a great degree. Although the patient may experience hoarseness of voice in cases of bilateral palsy, both vocal cords are paralyzed in a position between adduction and ab 
abduction. Breathing is impaired and phonation cannot occur. In situations where the nerves are only partially damaged, the vocal folds become paralyzed in a fully adducted position. If this occurs bilaterally, the rima glottidis, the space between the vocal cords, is completely closed and emergency surgical intervention is required to restore the airway. These are some of the clinical uh, relevances. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you.